in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hiding behind locked doors that first Easter night, disciples in a time of mourning gathered together, and yet perplexing news was surrounding them all as they met. The news was shared. The tomb was empty. Someone's taken the body. Well, someone else would say, but we've seen him. The comments came forth. Can you imagine the retorts that would have bounced off of the walls? Come on, really? How much wine have you had already? And then into that room of sadness and questions and confusion, Jesus steps and then all are very still. But Thomas was not there that night. Each gospel story has many levels to it, many layers that need to be unwrapped. Today's gospel story stretches out over a whole week, and the oh so human voice within each one of us can readily say, oh, come on, really? And yet the voice of faith within can very well say, I don't understand, yet I will make that leap across a grand canyon filled with questions and choose to believe. Thomas is forever known to us as the Doubting Thomas, a name we give to a person who just doesn't believe something we may say to them this very day. It is that nickname that carries on down through time. One of the states in America, Missouri, is called the Show Me State. Perhaps you've heard that reference from a person on a TV show or in a movie or even in your own life who just looks at you and then says, I'm from Missouri. They're really saying, show me. I see more than a doubting, show me Thomas in our story that we hear today. I see a man in grief after the brutal execution, the death of his beloved friend, Jesus. I see a broken Thomas. The death of a loved one, as we all know, can bring about much brokenness. The waves of grief can crash over or may simply lap gently at our feet and often without warning. Why wasn't Thomas with his friends in that room? that first Easter night? Was it because he just needed to be alone? Or perhaps walk along under the dark sky or the starlit sky, if you will, perhaps with that quiet, trusted friend who would just be quiet and still and let Thomas cry a little. He would hear good news at some point, yet still this broken man just couldn't take it all in. He would, I imagine, just try to breathe and deal with his grief. And he would speak words that marked him for all time. Unless I see the mark of the nails, put my finger in the mark, put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Show me. The following Sunday night, disciples were gathered again in that same place. And what a difference a week had made. And then again, Jesus stood before the group that this night would include Thomas. I would think that Jesus must have just turned and looked into his eyes, almost with a sense of sadness. 
and love. Put your finger here. Reach out your hand. Put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Perhaps Thomas at that moment just fell on his knees and wept and reached out to hug his beloved friend. My Lord, my God. I think at that moment too, Jesus must have very softly whispered almost to him, words that however filled the room. Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The broken Thomas, the doubting Thomas, the believing Thomas. I know I am each Thomas at any given time. Which one might you be? There is a thought in today's forward day-by-day -day devotional booklet that says this. Our fragility becomes our strength because God restores our broken places, transforms our scars into works of art. Let me repeat that. Our fragility becomes our strength because God restores our broken places, transforms our scars into works of art. Not too long ago, I read an article on grief and the, the woman who wrote it has this to say, a reminder, remember, even a broken crayon can steal color. Ah, new art in our lives. That broken and doubting Thomas, graced with a most special appearance of his beloved friend, his Lord and God, believed. He was restored, his scars transformed. He colored anew. May the words of his Lord, his God, our Lord, and our God be heard in our times of brokenness and doubt, when it is as if we are from Missouri, whispering, show me, show me, please show me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe, so that in our times of brokenness we may color anew. In our times of doubt, we may leap across that grand canyon filled with questions. And by the way, that actual grand canyon in that beautiful state of Arizona is indeed wide and very deep. And as we make those leaps across such a canyon, figuratively speaking, of course, may we come to believe again and then again, and with another leap, for we always leap, believe again. A saying attributed to St. Augustine of the fourth century is new every time I hear it. We are Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. May we sing that song, Perhaps at times we can only whisper it, and at other times simply sit and listen to it be sung around us. But it is our song. May it bring peace to your soul and mine. A blessed Easter tide to you and yours. Amen.